きないと言う
those things are like your it's your last opportunity. And, and guess what? If it's not doesn't feel right, if that voice in the back of my head says, This doesn't feel right, stand up. Start your routine over again. You know, swing down. Sometimes one of the main things that you're gonna notice is your feet are improperly aligned. <laughs> and I know Richie can identify with that because you know when you get playing nine ball and you have really tough shots, just a slight misalignment and you're gonna miss miss the ball. You know what I mean? If you if you pay attention to those fundamentals that he's talking about, if everything is aligned right, it feels a certain way. Exactly. And if you're crooked this way too far, then it doesn't feel the same. And if you get used to that feeling of the fundamentals being correct, all of a sudden it's like, wow, I'm I'm pointing way over here and it doesn't feel the same and then you get used to that. Yeah. Sometimes you have to because the table's in your way and you're way out there. Right. Or so, yeah. But if you get used to the way it feels, your routine is your routine. That's what your safety zone. Everything is the same. Exactly. Your comfort zone, safety zone. I like that because you can count on your pre-shot routine to get you on the right line. Okay. okay. Yeah. And you know that's something we'll work on. As, as you slowly begin to do these drills and practice, you know some of these pre-shot routine uh, uh, necessary movements. I think you'll, you'll start to realize that once you get your body and your cue prop on the proper alignment, it's just a matter of letting the cue go, and you're going to start making a bunch of balls. Like, well, this game isn't so hard after all. Right? <laughs> really, really. Yeah. Did everybody get a handout? I hope. Okay. I do have an inch. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one over here. Let me get it. There you go. Welcome, Chris. There you go. Let me just read my quote. This is kind of a long one, and I don't, I don't even know who said it. But I, uh, I've been playing pool so long that somehow, sometimes I think some of the uh, psychological components of the game are extremely important, especially when you're learning, because it's important to have a really good attitude about playing pool. The more clearly you visualize and commit to the shot, the more likely you are to succeed. Think of how many times you got over a shot and weren't sure about what you wanted to do, and you did, didn't really commit to anything, you just kind of hit it. You know, I, when I think back of all the critical shots I've missed over my career, because of that, it's, it, it's uh, incredible. But just the simple fact of seeing the shot and committing to the shot that you, you picture in your mind will make it much more likely that you'll pull it off. Your body will actually do the correct things to make it happen. But you've got to have a clear picture in your mind of what you want to do. Imagination and creativity are a huge part of mastering pocket billiards. Indecision and conflicting thoughts are deal breakers. Now, this is not just geometry. Pool is just not points, lines, and angles and things like that. It's a lot more. Uh, I think there's a lot of art to playing pool. You need imagination. You need creativity. You know, uh, if you talk to Richie, I'm sure over the years, he's had lots of racks where, you know, he's come up with things in his mind. Oh, that's, you know, like the first time you've ever, ever created something. I like to tell people that the cue stick is your paintbrush, the cloth is your canvas, and your balls are the paint. Use your imagination. Be creative. Try new things. That's how you actually become better at something. You know, it's not just a matter of following all the drills and things that I teach you. But, uh, you know, we like to keep this class in a dialogue format, so jump in and ask questions as we go. Last week we did something uh, that I think is uh, the most important shot in the pool. We talked about the stop shot. And let me just do a real quick review of that and how important it is. Remember the last time we set up a straight in shot and we had it from different distances like this? Now, this is an excellent chance, to, you know, something to work on when you're practicing, you know, between, between Fridays and classes. But it's a chance to do all the things that we've talked about. 
breathe and relax. Draw the line, aim point, target line. Cues length away. Swing down. And again, when you swing down onto the shot like that, that's something you can actually practice. Because you want to be able to swing down on the shot over and over again until you can lay the cue right on the knee. And then you'll feel, you start to feel more confident. You'll start to feel more enthusiastic. You'll more confident about making the shot. But on the stop shot, you notice I have a pretty lengthy distance between the 12 ball and the cue ball here. Now, if I'm playing in a tournament or, eight foot, uh, or, a, or a league match or something like that, and I want to play position with the eight ball here, a lot of people might hit the center of the ball and slam it real hard. What I want you to notice is I'm going to stop the cue ball, but I'm going to use very little effort and very little stroke. But what I'm going to do on this shot is I'm going to hit the cue ball just a little lower. Swing down. Take my nice warm-up strokes. Stay down to the back of the pocket. You notice I didn't slam that. I hit it a little off center, but it still went in. But I'm always nervous when I teach classes, so I can't really <laughs> uh, perform as well as I usually do. Now, same shot. Same shot. We'll move the cue ball even farther back this time. Let me get it right on the spot there. Way back here. All right, I've got quite a bit of distance now. But what I want you to notice is I'm going to hit the cue ball a little bit lower this time. And you'll notice that I'm using, I'm not using any more effort. I'm just hitting a little bit below center, like this, with my warm-up strokes. Did that look any harder than the shot from here? So when you learn how to do stop shots, it's not about, you know, you need to accelerate the cue through, through, but when you get any distance between the cue ball and the object ball, you just move a little lower. That way the cue ball, on its way there, will have back, backward spin, but by the time it gets to the object ball, it's just skidding along the clock. That is the most important shot in pocket billiards to learn. Because from there, that brings us into, the, into today's lesson, where we're going to do something called stunt. We're going to hit stop shots, but we're going to uh, shoot them at different angles, okay? from, from a cut perspective. Uh, or, yeah, go ahead. Stunt is also called squirt sometimes, isn't it? Uh, maybe. Uh, stun just means that the cue ball is not rolling forward or backward and skidding along the clock which is a really important shot. One other thing I almost forgot is another drill for your stroke. And again, if you ever have any questions about the stroke, again, uh, jump in and ask questions. One thing I didn't mention last time that I want you to remember is there actually is uh, uh, different activities that actually emulate the stroke in pocket buildings. How many of you ever thrown a softball in pitching underhand? Think of the, the rhythm and the beautiful uh, 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 rhythm that one does when they swing back and then swing all the way through. Just like the pendulum of a clock that we learn. That's a, kind of a, a, another way to describe the stroke. Another way, have you ever taken something underhanded and just thrown it like that? That's how smooth the stroke should be. In fact, I used to teach in the class that you imagine you have a spear in your hand and you're throwing it under you. Because you, you want the momentum of the backswing to create the follow through. You don't want to steer the cue, you don't want to hit it, you don't want to jab it. You want it to gently release through the back. And again, that's where we need to work on the light grip on the back of the cue. And I notice you all seem to be learning that. I, I, I watched Gail today. She's, She's got everything in perfect position, so she's really made a lot of progress. Okay, drill number one, and you can follow along in there. Any questions before we go on about the stroke? Oh, I think I've got one more here. That's hey, everybody's here today. That's great. And by the way, we did lose a student, uh, um, Paul, uh, had, had some really serious uh, illnesses. He had to have three, 
three uh, individual surgeries, so he's really having some issues right now. So he had to, he had to withdraw from the class. You remember Paul? Really nice guy. All right. Again, when you, when you do all these drills, if you're ever uh, um, not chalking your cue, you're going to notice that eventually you're going to start miscuing. So make sure when you chalk the cue that you chalk the perimeter edges all the way around like that. You don't have to grind it in or do it too hard. All right. You notice that I have the spots on the table and I have the white reinforcer below it. I'd like you to try it from both directions. But remember last time we did a straight in shot and we hit a rolling ball and we tried to determine the exact distance of that rolling ball to play position. This time we're gonna do about a half ball cut and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna hit a rolling ball, we're gonna hit a stun shot. Now a stun shot is a stop shot when you hit an object ball in the angle. That's, that's the way I define it. And then we're going to also try and see what happens when you hit backspin. Now, you notice I have these reinforcers on the table. Now, the reason why I do that is because you can set up the same shot every time and actually learn through exploration exactly where the cue ball will go using all three of those different, different strokes. What should I start out with? Follow, st stun, or draw? What would you like to see first? Follow. Follow. Does anybody want to make a guess where the cue ball will hit the rail over here? This is always fun to kind of think about it, you know, before the fact. Anybody want to point to where they think the cue ball? Anybody else? Oh, I mean this rail. This rail. Oh, there. Yeah. Remember, the cue ball is going to be rolling like this. Now, this is what you do when you play. You, you think you, you want to get position. Let's say the eight balls here and nine is the last ball on the table. But let's see what a rolling ball does and where it hits. So that was the correct shot if I wanted to play the eight ball in the corner pocket. But remember what we learned last time. Now, if I would have hit a stun shot, you would have taken the tangent line and hit the rail way up here and gone down the table there. But a rolling ball beats the tangent line. Instead of hitting there and going like that, the rolling ball made it hit almost to that dot, that diamond right there, and come straight across the table. So, what I'd like you to do when you're doing drill number one is just try hitting rolling balls on this shot over and over until you can predict exactly and consistently hit the rail on the other side in a certain area. It'll really teach you a lot because next time you have a shot like that, you'll know, well, to get position here, I need to hit it that way. All right, stun shot. Where, anybody want to guess where it goes? I kind of gave it away. <laughs> Down there. All right. All right. All right, in a stun shot, literally the cue ball will not be rolling at all. It's skidding all the way there. And let's just throw an eight ball down here. Say I want to get position for the eight. So I'm hitting it almost perfectly in the center. And that's pretty much where it would go into the second diamond. You know, that's where I would, yes. All right, let's try draw now. But look at the difference. A rolling ball came here. Stun came here. One, two, three, four diamonds. And I've kept the Q-tip on the center axis, haven't I? Look at the difference. That's a, how much you can do by keeping the Q-tip, as Willie Moscone says, in the center of the cue ball. Any guesses on draw? Okay. This time I'm going to hit well below center. And that was about to be expected, about this diamond here. So draw to there. Stun to here, 
rolling ball way over here. And by doing variations on the vertical axis of the cue ball, I could hit all these different areas. And that's what I kind of practice when I practice. Because for somebody that's played as long as I have, over 50 years, it's all about position play and it's all about the mental game. You know. Any questions about that? Well, let me explain it. That's, let's, let's figure it out. All right, when I hit that draw shot from this uh, spot here, the tangent line's about here. But as it hit the three ball, it started towards the tangent line, and the backspin made it curve this side, come up way over here. So then it came down to that diamond. The backspin actually made it curve from here to the rail. This way, the spinning backwards. Yeah, remember. You hit, on a draw shot, you hit the cue ball very low. Uh, in fact, if you watch most professionals, they probably hit it lower than you, you would want to because you know we're all, a lot of, a lot of times we shoot that shot we fear the the miscue. And you've all had miscues, right? You know no. that's that sounds like that horrible sound, like you're clicking metal or something. And the ball can go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Remember, the other reason that it came up here is because of the angle. It's not a straight-in shot. So you 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 were pointing that it was going to go in the other direction, but because of the angle, it has to come this way. Yeah, I just I'm I'm just really new to this. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's something that when you're when we're working after this, if that's something you don't, you know that's you probably maybe right now don't need to worry about. But I want to introduce these things just because eventually you're going to want to know know those things. But it's real important just to recognize that on every cut shot there is a tangent line, and that tangent line you can almost look at it like a piece of paper. In other words, you notice this edge of the paper is pointing towards the center of the pocket. The tangent line literally takes a 90 degree line right off the three ball. That's so, a good way to explain yeah, it. Yeah, if I'm hitting a, hitting a stun shot with no roll forward or backward, it'll take a 90 degree line right along that paper. But on that last shot, I had draw. So it started out on there, but the backspin curved it this way. And it took a steeper angle and hit, hit to the that side of the pocket. Anyway, when you, get, when you get used to that, your brain, when you get used to what happens on the reaction from his his stun, your brain just starts to recognize the corner of that paper and see where it's going. And as you get more comfortable with it at different angles, you can see that same paper doing that L sort of that goes off the paper. You become comfortable with that, and your brain starts to recognize that. And then in, in different situations, it's what you need, and your brain says, oh, there it is. And it gives it to you. OK, that's drill number one. And while you're doing this, we'll have fun with it. Work with a partner. But just experiment. Experiment. Where did, you know, how do I make the cue ball go to a certain place? Let's say I want to get you know, kind of a little different. Let's say I want to hit over here instead of over here. Uh, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to use English, but I could hit the cue ball not so high, a little bit lower, maybe more towards the middle, and just hit a rolling ball. See how, I, see how it, it didn't roll over as fast, so I was able to come to this spot. But that's how you learn. You know, really, when, when you can hit the ball when you're aiming and make shots, Controlling the white ball becomes, you know, the, the majority of the game. All right, any questions on that drill? I, you know, we, you know, Richie and I, yeah, go ahead. Um, like at home? Yeah. I mean, I tried a little, that angle, I can't tell where to, where to hit it. So I've just been doing a straight on. So like, well, where, where do you hit? Good, like, good question. So All right. She's, this is really important, and we talked about this a little bit last time. But you did, but I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. All right. When I look at a shot like this, 
I get behind the floor and I just kind of see where the center of the pocket is, and I see where the I need to contact the floor ball. Now there's several aiming systems that you can use on this. You know, I've played for over 50 years, so I use something called automatic aim. I see the angle and I know just immediately where to hit it. But when you're learning, as you pointed out, you need to have some sort of way to determine where you need to hit that. And there's two main ways to think of this. I could, one, imagine an imaginary ball, we call it a ghost ball, like that. And all I have to do to hit this correctly is aim the center of my cue through the center of the cue ball to the very center of the ghost ball, which is right there. Now here's another way to do this that I, I think is just as good and you know what I usually try to think about. On every cut shot, I just imagine where, where the half ball is, an inch and an eighth behind the contact. And then you can almost twist your cue over like this and see exactly where you need to hit. But too many people hit this shot thick because they aim at the contact point and they end up doing this. They hit it, they don't cut it. I noticed that, yeah, is that what happens to you? Okay. But that's something that while we're doing this drill, you can work on, on your aiming too. And also work on your setup and your alignment and all that, okay? Any other questions? That's a good one. I can see your, your wheels are spinning. <laughs> I just want to go on the table and start trying. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's it's done. Like, it's like, okay. I'm on the table. <laughs> Time to keep That's playing. Well, I still remember it, so yeah. it's old age setting in. All right. Drill number two. And these are the main drills I'd like you to work on today. But this one is, uh, I think, even for an advanced player, is a good thing to do. You'll notice on each table I have uh, reinforcers set up in the middle. Now, well, I want you to do kind of the same thing using the side pocket. Now, if I hit a stun shot and I make the 11 in the side, where will my cue ball hit on the rail? Then? Where, do you, where would you guess? All the way down the end. Yeah, the middle diamond. And this, this is a really good way of practicing that stop shot or, or stun shot, because it becomes a stun shot when you hit a stop shot and an angle. Okay, here's, uh, here's the uh, contact point, and my aim point is the middle of the ghost ball. What, what, so yeah, there's Here, here's the top, like that. That or a half, half ball behind the contact. And that's a half ball. Yeah, an inch, in exact, a, a pool ball is two and a quarter uh, inches, a yeah. half of a ball okay. is, is an inch and an eighth. Okay. No, I guess I feel like that. Okay. Now this, the first one, I'm going to hit a hit a stun shot. So I'll hit pretty much at the center, and I will accelerate to the ball. And pretty much, you can expect every time if you hit that shot, you hit right near the middle time. But let's say I got a shot like this. Let's say the eight ball is over there. Stun shot's not going to do me any good here, is it? So how should I hit this ball so the cue ball hits here and bounces up by the eight so I have a shot in the corner of the pot? The rolling ball? The rolling ball, you got it, good job. It's just a nice, simple, easy rolling ball. It will start on the tangent line and then go forward enough to hit near that diamond and bounce up behind the eight. all my swing down. Oh, was it right? That it makes it look easy. Yeah. 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 All right, now the other shot. And when you're doing this, just have fun with it. Try to hit different spots on the rail. You know, because that's really what it's all about. But number one priority is always making the ball. Making the ball trumps position play. I tell people in the league that all the time, but a lot, a lot of them will try these 
you know, uh, crazy shots, you know, to get position, and they'll just splatter the balls all over and kind of give the game away. But when you make the ball, you get to shoot again, no matter how bad the shot is. <laughs> when you give up the table, making the ball is really trumps everything else. All right, the rolling ball hit here. On this shot, if I use a little draw, you can probably guess where it's going to hit, right? Instead of going to the tangent, it'll start curving this way, get the backspin, and probably hit it right around that, that spot here. I can buy a truck for this. And I'll buy the truck first. And that, that would be a fun. Now, today, if you could do those three things, hit this time, hit that time, and this time, and using uh, rolling ball, stun, and drop, that would be a great accomplishment. But again, make sure you make the ball first and work with your partners to make sure you're doing all the fundamentals correctly because you want to work on your alignment, your aim, and all, all that. That takes precedence over all these other things I've taught today. Okay? All right, uh, I guess I just want to finish up with a couple of game winning shots. I think you, got, you all enjoy that, I hope. Oh, yes, we all right, all right. <laughs> no, you don't like game winning shots. <laughs> no, I never get to the game winning <laughs> shot. Oh, you never get there. Okay. You'll never get it. there. This is like a, a dream that's coming true right. for all of us. <laughs> all right, your opponent just dogged the eight. But they got real lucky because they put the cue ball in the jaws over here like this. So really, you can't go straight at the eight. So what do we need to do to win the game here? Yeah, we, we call it a kick shot. But the reason why I bring this up now in the class is that you notice a pool table is half as wide as it is long, four and a half by nine. So to make this shot is really, really simple. All I have to do is bisect the angle. In other words, to make the eight ball, which diamond would I hit with a rolling ball? Center. Center diamond. And that should take me pretty much right at the eight. And again, hard work above. Draw that line, even the diamond down. Draw the line all the way back. Swing down. Nice warm up strokes. And this oh, good try. These tables run short, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, let me, let, me, let me adjust a little bit. I'll go a little bit left. That's the one thing about pool. Every table you're going to have to adjust. And then different yeah. times of year, like in the summer and the yeah. winter, the humidity changes, the, the atmosphere changes, the table changes, and sometimes it'll play shorter, sometimes it'll play longer. You have to constantly be checking. When you say short and long, what does that mean? Well, this side of the eight ball would be considered short. This side would be long. But that time, I actually hit past the diamond and it still came short. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. I'll adjust a little bit. Just a little bit left. That time, I went long. I went long. All right, a little bit less adjustment this time. That's the one. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, whoa! Oh, oh. <laughs> this is fun. There you go, Castle. Everybody misses, right? Yeah. Oh, that's been long. Yeah, maybe I should put one in here. Can we throw bats on this? Yeah. <laughs> Can we throw bats on this? Three rails, and there is a diamond system. We're not going to cover that in the class, 
But literally, if I hit that second diamond, it should take me right into the game. Oh, I went short again. I got to go a little lower, a little lower. We're charging you for this. <laughs> there you go, buddy. A little lower again. This table is really short. There, that should be good. One and done. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah! See, uh, most tables, you'd have to go into two and a half. This table is like at one. Which oh, just means it, it just means that there's different rails and they, and they react differently. So and again, it's hot and humid in here too, so it, uh, like New rails, rails, hard rails, soft yeah. rails, yeah. loose rails. If you uh, if yeah. you do have a, a time before you play, yeah. it, it it really benefits you to step up to a table, get comfortable with it, roll some balls around, see how the rails are reacting. If you do these uh, like what he's doing on that, if you have time before a match, if you step up and roll a couple balls around, check the three rails, check the halves, you can just get used to how a table plays. It might benefit you because if it comes down to a critical shot like that, and you have time to look at. Oh, it's coming short. I got to go a little long. If you have time to do that, yeah. when it starts the match, you might end up in a spot where that benefits you in the end, and you make the shot. Yeah, and you can't and you you, you can't uh, think that now that you play it three weeks later, you know a lot of league players play it regular, then it's going to do the same thing it did the last time. You know, is it raining outside? Yeah. Is it so? Each time you come to a table. When you play in a tournament, do you always stay on the same table? No. Oh, no. You have to adjust. Sometimes uh, a pool hall will have different tables. Like uh, those. They'll have a Brunswick, they'll have a Diamond, and you got to adapt to each one. Well, I mean, they'll break for that particular tournament. Well, no, no. They're usually a tournament, you'll have like 20 tables or so, and, and each match, each match will play a different table. So it, there's a lot of uh, adjustment. Well, we got to get Jan so she can start hitting balls. I'm ready. I'm ready. I've got my paper folded. I'm ready. Anyway, uh, you know, Richie and Brad and I will be coming around and, and helping as much as we can. But I'd like to work on those, those two drills. I think you'll have a lot of fun with. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Something I have to look. Well, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's something you have to do. Otherwise, you're going to lose a lot of time. I mean, it's not a fun part of the game. It's just part of the game.